All right, this is where we ended up though last time, right? You know, I said that the structure of DNA is this double helix. That's the classic structure you're always given. But depending on the conditions, DNA can adopt some of these other structures. Now, in the cell, it seems to be mostly this one and occasionally a bit of this mixed together. Okay? And part of it is that when we get these um, X-ray crystallography pictures of the DNA molecule, it's usually not with the DNA in the cell functioning as DNA does. It's very difficult to do that. Okay. All right. So now let's have a look at DNA replication. So you're good with the structure of DNA, right? And what are the bonds that hold the two strands together? Hydrogen bonds. And what's the pairing? A to T, C to G. And how many hydrogen bonds are between the A's and the T's? And how many between the C's and G's? Threes. Good. How can you remember that easily? A T two, two. Okay. C G three. Okay. All right. All right. So DNA replication. I'll go over sort of the bullet points of the process, and then we'll look at them in a bit more detail. Here's the way it works. First, the helix unzips. What bonds are we breaking? Hydrogen bonds. Okay. Fairly weak bonds. That exposes two what we call parent strands. And the parent strands act as templates. And so if I give you a parent strand, because you know the pairing rules, you can construct a daughter strand, right? Okay. So the daughter strands are assembled using our pairing rules. And the result is that we get two identical copies of your genome. It's called the semi-conservative mode or mechanism of replication. Why is it called semi-conservative? <coughs> has nothing to do with its political perspectives. Why is it called semi-conservative? Because half the old structure is conserved in the new molecules of DNA that are made. The two new daughter strands, the two new double-stranded bits of DNA that result from replication, one strand of each of those two was a parent strand in the original molecule. Right? Sorry? Yeah, hang on. I'll show you that with a diagram. Okay? All right, so have a look at this diagram here. Here we've got the parental DNA, a double helix. All right, first it unzips, forming two single stranded parental strands, and then daughter strands form. Okay, this would be the daughter strand to this parental strand. Okay. All right, there's the parental strand, there's the new daughter strand forming. So here we have a new strand, a new double helix, the other new double helix. Half of this new double helix was the parent in the original, so it's semi-conserved, semi-conservative. Okay. There were other mechanisms of replication proposed that weren't semi-conservative. All right, so let me just draw a quick diagram on the board. 
Does somebody just want to yell out a DNA sequence? All right, I'll do it. Okay. So, what's going to be the complement? Complementary sequence to this. Now you can follow along. Okay. So I've done in blue, forgive these differences. Obviously, there aren't differences in the distance between the nitrogen bases. Okay. So here are my two parental strands. Bonds that hold them together are hydrogen bonds. I'll just do them as little dotted lines like this. Well, there's an enzyme that comes in, breaks these bonds. So now these are unpaired. Now, the first sort of rendition of replication I'm going to give you is the simplest one, but it's not quite accurate. Okay? And I'll give a little bit more complexity to this and give you a more accurate representation of how it replicates. Okay? But the basics are this. An enzyme comes in, splits it. So the enzyme breaks the hydrogen bonds and unwinds the helix. And then we've got these two single-stranded bits of DNA. And a daughter strand can be assembled based on our pairing rules. All right? So let's see. What would be paired to this A? Tell me what these are. What's the next one? I've covered it up. How can you tell? How can you tell? You're not just guessing. I can cover these up. Exactly. I can cover them up, and you should be able to know what this strand is, because it's going to be identical to this strand, right? So you don't need to see these. Just read off there. C, T, T. Are you a good guesser? <laughs> no. When you said I'm guessing, I tuned you out. Sorry, Angelica. <laughs> All right. And now we can do the same here. The daughter strand is going to be exactly the same as the other parental strand. A, T, C, G, G, A, A. Now, you notice I've not drawn the backbone anymore. OK? I've not drawn the sugar phosphate backbone anymore. Is that OK? OK. All right. So now. We've got two new double-stranded pieces of DNA. Okay, parental in blue, daughter in red. Now, in principle, it's that simple. Okay, but here's the deal. Do you remember I talked about DNA as having a three prime and five prime end, and the two strands run anti-parallel? So now let's give it some sidedness. Let's just say that. This is the 3 prime, and this is the 5 prime end of our daughter strand. Which end is this? 3 prime, and this is the 5. OK, so the one up here is the what? 5 prime, and the one up here is the 3 prime. OK, so this then, of course, is going to be 5 prime. This is going to be the 3 prime. The enzyme which actually stitches or joins these nucleotides together is called DNA polymerase. Makes sense, right? But DNA polymerase can only add nucleotides to the three prime end. All right? Yeah. Why not write this down in big, bold letters? And you just got to remember it, okay? But from that, you can work out lots of other things. 
DNA polymerase only adds nucleotides to the three prime end. DNA polymerase. Yes. As in the reading that you would have done this week, Angelica. Yes. Cameron. You can tell. I'll show you how you can tell. All right, do you want to know how you can tell? Do you want to know how you can tell? Yeah. Okay, you sure? All right, I will show you. I will show you. Yes. Yes. DNA polymerase only adds nucleotides to the three prime end. Okay. So... If I have an enzyme flying along, unzipping the DNA like this, exposing two parental strands, DNA polymerase can follow that enzyme, right, on this daughter strand, because it can add to the three prime end. It can follow it. It can go bop, 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 bop. Okay? But this, here's the three prime end of this daughter strand. Can't do it, can it? It can't follow that enzyme. And so we've got two parental strands. One of them we call the leading strand. One of them we call the lagging strand. And that's just for the parent that you're talking about, right? Yes. But you could say there's a daughter strand on the lagging strand. So remember, let me take these off now. I'm going to go back. It's hard to draw it on the board in some ways because it's a, a fluid process in motion. So remember, DNA polymerase can only add to the three prime end. Okay? So here would be an A. This is the five prime end, right? Here. So that side is the five prime. This side is the three prime. So DNA polymerase can then come and add another one here, right? And it can add another one there. And it can add another one here. And it can add another one here. And another one here. And another one here. Right? Because this is the three prime end. OK? But here, our daughter strand, because they run anti-parallel, this is the three prime end. This is the five prime end. So here's the way it works on the lagging strand. DNA polymerase can't add them in the same way it does to the leading strand. What DNA polymerase does here is it has to make it backwards. So it would maybe start here and give it a C. This is the five prime end, remember, right? As the three prime. So then it's got to add this one next, a G. And then it adds this one next, an A. And then it adds this one next. And then it would jump over here and start, add a T, only adds to the three prime end, add another T, only adds to the three prime end, so it adds a C. And then it would join these, this little stretch with this little stretch here. Does that make sense? Do you see how that works? No? Can you explain it again? Sorry. If you just get this straight, only adds to the three prime end. Only adds to the three prime end. What's confusing me is that you have the beginning of the daughter cell with the three prime and the end of the parent, and that's what's not No, again. they always run anti parallel. Always. Here's the parental form strand. Form it flips? No. If I gave you two strands like this, just two strands, you would know one is five. You would know this, wouldn't you? That they run anti-parallel. So now let's take this stretch here. You know they run anti-parallel. Three to five. So that way it goes three to five in this direction. You know they run anti-parallel, don't you? So the daughter strand here, I could just draw it as a strand like this. Here's the parental strand, this is the five prime end. So you know this must be the three prime end. 
of that daughter strand. This must be the five prime end. Okay? Yes? No. I'll show you how you can tell which is the three and five. It's just the way I drew it this time. Okay? There is a way you can find out, but you've got to look at the carbon atoms in the sugar that makes the backbone. So I'll show you in a minute. So don't worry about where I've done it left or right or right or left. I could completely, here's what I'd like to do. I'm going to change this, and I'm going to change that, and change that, and change that, change that, change that, change that. Okay? Now, oh, what did I have as this one down here? Five. 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 I'm going to make it a three. Now, in your diagram, I want you to give me the correct ends for all of the parent and daughter strands. Oh, I did? Somebody, oh, <laughs> mucking me about. So let's make this the five prime. So let's follow this parent strand. We know it goes five to three, so what's going to be at the end of this parent strand? The which? Three prime, okay. This runs anti-parallel, so what end is this one? So let's go to the end of that parent strand. What's going to be this end? So let's look at this daughter strand. They always run anti-parallel. So which end is this? Which end is this? Now let's look at this daughter strand. Which end is this? Which end is this? OK? You OK with that? Then DNA polymerase can only add to the three prime end. OK? So then these would switch. Correct. OK? So this would then be the lagging strand. This would then be the leading. You can always tell the leading strand because the daughter strand is copied, is made continually. It can continually add to this three prime end. As it unzips, it can continually add nucleotides following the enzyme that does the unzipping. Right? So the leading strand is copied in the same direction that the DNA molecule is unzipped. OK? Lagging strand is copied backwards. All right? I've got a couple of animations to show you this. But if you always get set, add to the three prime end only. All right? You can see that this would be copied continually. If this is the three prime end here, you know this must be the five prime end. So you know then it's produced like this. Let's add to the three prime. Let's add to the three prime. Add to the three prime. Add to the three. Add to the three. Add to the three. Because this is the three prime end. OK? Up here in this daughter strand, can we start here? Can we say, well, there's an A. I'm going to add to this end. What end would this be? What end would this be? The five prime. We can't add to the five prime, can we? No. We can do this. Let's just say we start here, which is this one. G. Is this the three prime end? Yes, we can add to that. That's OK. So now let's put a C there. Can we add to this? This is the three prime end, yeah. So let's add a T. Let's add the A. Then we have to go back here and start. See the way it's copied backwards in the opposite direction to the DNA gets unzipped in the lagging strand. So now let's add one to here. A. We can add to the three prime end. We can add to the three prime end. Right. And then this little fragment's already made. This one gets made, and then they're stitched together. OK? Could you have it starting at this end as well? Ah, in fact, yes, you can. <laughs> That's right. You better believe it. So yeah, we can. And I'm glad you said that, because that's what I was going to have you do. OK? 
What I want you to do in this diagram you just drawn, I want you to add another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nitrogen bases to each side, but have them be unzipped. I want you to label which are the three primes, which are the five prime directions. And then I want you to put an arrow showing the direction your daughter strand is made. In this case, the daughter strand is made in that direction. In this case, daughter strands are made in that direction. Okay. First bit's easy, right? Add another seven nucleotides. Okay? Okay, so let's go C, G, G, A, T, A, T. Okay, which end is this? It's the three prime, right? Never changes. This is the five prime end. Okay, daughter strands are going to assemble in the opposite, in, sorry, daughter strands run anti parallel. So I'm just going to use a red line for right now. So what end is this? 3 prime. So here's the 5 prime. So is this daughter strand produced in that direction? No. I can only add to the 3 prime end. So we've got to start, say here, A, this is the three prime ends, so it can only add on this side, a T and an A. Then we can maybe start here. Let's get a G. Let's get a C, because this is the three prime end. Let's get a C. Let's get a T. Good. Where else? So you don't understand why we start in the middle. Here's what I can't demonstrate. It's a fluid, it's, um, it doesn't unzip and then stay static. As soon as it unzips, as soon as it unzips, you start to get a little fragment copied. Okay? And then it unzips more and you get a little fragment copied. When I show you the animation, it will show you why. Why I'm starting in the middle. Okay? Would it help, actually, if I said this? Would it help if I said, you know what, we've got to start here, okay? G, C, C, T, A, T. It's adding to the three prime end. I think if you tell them the blue C that starts to be dropped down is closer to the three prime end on the blue on the bottom. No, this... But, but from the, you're going from the left parent. to the three prime end. Or from right to left. Don't worry about the parent. DNA polymerase can only add to the three prime end of a growing strand of DNA. Okay? We know this is the three prime end of this growing strand because we know this is the five prime of the parent strand. Right? You okay with that? Up here, I don't think it creates, does it create any confusion? Hang on, let me just complete this. Here we know this is the five prime, right? This is the 3 prime. So we know that it's going to go in this direction, right? Can only add to the 3 prime. There's a T, there's an A. Which end is this? 3. So it can only add to this end, so it's got to add to there. Only add to there. Only add to the 3 prime end. Only add to the 3 prime end. Only add to the 3 prime end. Okay? Now, Ashley, your question is, why does it start in the middle? Well, I didn't. I started just here, right? And that's okay. But remember, when this is replicating, add, 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 that other enzyme, which is zooming along, has now zoomed along to here. So now it's going to start to add, boop, 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 in that direction and catch up there. I'll show you the animation. But just get it straight. Only as to the three prime end. If you get that straight, you can work back everything else, okay? Okay, let's see the movie, right? Did you bring your popcorn? 
No? How come? Doesn't that just seem like a musical introduction to a classic movie, you know, like a Ben-Hur movie or something like that? Do you even know who Ben-Hur is? <laughs> okay, replication. You ready for this? The animation that's going to make it all clear, or clear as mud. What can you handle, the basic or the advanced? Oh. Do the basic, do the basic and then do the advanced. All right. Actually, I'll, I'll go back. Sorry, guys, I'll go back to this one. The structure of DNA that Watson and Crick discovered suggests how genetic information is passed on. Before a cell divides, the double helix unwinds and the two strands of the DNA molecule in the nucleus separate. See, this isn't quite accurate, the way they're showing it there. For one strand, it is, not the other one. Each strand is then used as a template for the construction of new DNA molecules. The replication of DNA is simple in theory, but much more complicated in reality. The precise details have only recently been worked <coughs> out. Take a look at the animation called Replication Mechanism to see what actually happens at the molecular level. See, that's pretty straightforward. Yeah, you can handle that. But all that is one little, one little detail. All right, so you know I said when I first saw this, it gave me goosebumps. This has been out quite a long time, but this was, this was the actual movie that I saw that gave me goosebumps. Oh, hang on. Sorry, Ben. animation based on molecular research, we are now able to see how DNA is actually copied in living cells. You are looking at an assembly line of amazing miniature biochemical machines that are pulling apart the DNA double helix and cranking out a copy of each strand. The DNA to be copied enters the production line from bottom left. Okay. The whirling blue molecular machine is called helicase. It spins the DNA as fast as a jet engine as it unwinds the double helix into two strands. One strand is copied continuously and can be seen spooling off to the right. Things are not so simple for the other strand because it must be copied backwards. It is drawn out repeatedly in loops and copied one section at a time. The end result is two new DNA molecules. Did that help? Show it again. Show it again? Sorry? Basic or advanced? Using computer animation based on molecular research, we are now able to see how... All right. Here's the parental strand, okay? This is that enzyme I said that breaks the two strands apart. Here's the leading strand coming out. This is DNA polymerase that's making the daughter strand, leading strand. What you can't see on this animation is nucleotides that come flying in to be joined together to form the daughter strand. It would just be too confusing to add that. All right, let me see if I can freeze it right about here. Oh. Where's my control gone? There's a pause. Oh, yeah. Pause. Perfect. OK, so here's my two parental strands. Here's the enzyme that's breaking the hydrogen bonds, splitting them into two strands. Yep. Is there a specific name? Or the enzyme, yes, it does, called helicase. And I'll give you those enzyme names in a moment. 
So here's the leading strand popping off down there. That's equivalent to my leading strand here. And it's copied continuously, right? There's the enzyme DNA polymerase. And here's my template strand. And nucleotides come flying in there. And it simply adds them, joins them together to form the daughter strand based on the template from the parental strand. And it adds them to the three prime ends. So add, 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 add. As this feeds in, OK, as this template strand feeds in, daughter strands assembled. Add, 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 add. Here is that lagging strand. Well, it can't be copied in that same direction. If it copied it in this direction, the same direction as down here, it would be violating that 3 to 5 prime. The issue is DNA polymerase can only add to the 3 prime end. So it has to make it backwards. Okay? It can't continually add to this end. So it has to add it the other way, all right? the opposite direction to the leading strand. And it does so in these fragments. So here's the DNA polymerase all right, that's making the daughter strand on the lagging strand. All right? So DNA polymerase situates itself distant, even though I know it's folded back. It separates its, its distant to helicase. See the way polymerase here is very close to helicase. The polymerase here is all the way along there. Right? So now the daughter strand is made in these fragments backwards, or the opposite direction to this one. Doesn't go in, no, it doesn't flip directions. <coughs> See the way there? It's being added to backwards. Boop, 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 boop. Whoa. See the way it's being made backwards, the opposite direction to this. It's pulling it through. I've got another animation to show you, one that's a bit slower. Sorry? I'll show you a different animation. Hold your horses. If you don't, don't worry about mechanically how it's doing with those loops flipping around. All right, watch this. This is a much slower, a little less realism. Oh, you're joking. <laughs> watch what, right? Right, hang on. First, let's get oriented. Stop. OK. So far, so good. Here's our parental strands, right? Here's our enzyme helicase, which goes in, splits them apart. Here we have one parental strand. Here we have another parental strand. With this animation, don't worry about these binding proteins. Don't worry about primers. Just focus on leading, lagging, lagging, and directionality. What's the green blob attached to? Don't worry about that. Don't worry about those things. Just leading, lagging, directionality. One DNA strand encodes the leading strand, which forms from its 
five prime to its three prime end. Right. See that enzyme there? Only adds to the three prime end. Only adds to the three prime end of that daughter strand. Okay? Using DNA polymerase three. No problem here, but the lagging strand presents. All right, hold your horses. So see the way it can just continually do it? As this parental strand is fed into this enzyme, this enzyme just simply adds to the growing daughter strand. Does that make sense? All right, no problem. But the lagging strand presents problems. It has to form from 5' prime to 3' prime too. It forms in pieces called Okasaki fragments. <laughs> Who do you think discovered them? Oh, I would imagine Dr. Okasaki, right? First, an RNA primate laid... What did I say about the RNA primases, single-stranding binding proteins? Don't worry about any of those. Lays down an RNA primer. Then DNA polymerase 3 lays down new DNA. The process repeats again and again. Okay. Right. I'll tell you this, but I don't want to add to the confusion. But keep to what end of the daughter strand does DNA polymerase add nucleotides? The three prime end. Okay, lock that away. It's, I wouldn't say it's immutable and unviolatable, but let's just say it is. Now I'm going to give you another little rule you can follow. And this one is not quite accurate, but I think it will help you with this. So here's our DNA polymerase enzyme. Okay, it only adds to the three prime end of the daughter strand, and so the parental strand. What direction does polymerase move along the parental strand? In a three to five. All right, in a three to five. So, I don't like giving you this because it's not, but it helps you visualize. So, three to five, DNA poly along parental. Okay? So, we're okay with the polymerase moving along in this direction, right? Because it moves in a three to five prime direction, right? DNA polymerase is going to move in that direction. DNA polymerase only moves in a three to five, so which, if it's just there, which direction is it going to move along this parental strand? Only in that direction. Okay? So, we've got two rules. Only adds to the three prime end of the daughter strand, moves in a three to prime Five along the parental strand. Yeah. So on the lagging strand, and then it's adding the new DNA. Is it a whole new enzyme that starts behind it and catches up, or is it designed to jump back? You know, that's a good question, and there are multiple copies of the enzymes. Okay. But you don't don't worry about that. It zooms along, and then it comes back. And it zooms along here. Then it comes back and it goes along here. Yes, Crystal. Daughter strand doesn't really, don't think of the daughter strand as moving. Daughter strand just gets assembled. Yeah, but you know, don't just, it adds to the three prime end. Just try and keep that. No. It only adds to three prime end of the strand being replicated. The parental strand has nothing added to it, does it? It's only the daughter strand that gets things added to it because this is already complete. It's 
only the daughter strand that is synthesized, right? Parent strand's already there. Is anything added to the parental strand in replication? No, I mean the daughter strand is, but no new nucleotides are added to the parental strand. At what phase of the cell cycle is DNA replicated? The S phase. Who said prophase? Uh, you're talking about the S phase right now. Yeah. This replication is occurring during the S phase, correct? Okay. Did you say what? Prophase? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Clear as mud, right? I want some volunteers. I want some volunteers. I want a whole bunch of volunteers. Let's have the front row stand up. But you don't have to move anywhere. Ben, I want you for this one then. <laughs> All right, so turn around, face class, come, come closer, that's it. I do want you. I want you to stand on a bench and dance like a monkey. No, I'm kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right, so, now you've got to stand over here. Hold them up. All right, so here we have, hold them up nicely, a DNA strand, right? Here we have a DNA strand. And let's just say that this is our five prime end. This is our three, three prime end of a parental strand, okay? Five prime, three prime of our parental strand. Now, Ben, you are DNA polymerase. All right? Okay? Your DNA polymerase. And this parental strand is now available to you to act as a template. You're going to now make a daughter strand. Okay? Mm -hmm. Five prime, three prime. Where are you going to start? I have no idea. All I know is that she has an A. I know that T goes with the A. <laughs> well, she has a hang on. If that's... Goes with the C. All right, well, if that's the five prime end, that's the three prime end. Let's just say that a daughter strand would form here, right? Which end of just, the daughter I strand just, would I this be? I just barely understood what interphase and mitosis was. And all of a sudden we're talking about replication of the DNA. This is so new to me, I'm just like, what? So walk us through it. This is the five prime end of That's the, the parental end. strand. Okay. That's the three prime end. All right? You know they run anti-parallel. Yeah. So let's, if, if we had a daughter strand form here, which end of the daughter strand would this be? She's a five prime. Correct. Then you have to have a three prime here. This would be the three prime end of the daughter strand, right? Okay. And if the daughter strand ended over here, be prime. this would be the five prime end of it, right? From so the you, you are DNA polymerase, okay? okay? You can only add to the three prime end of the daughter strand. Here's the five prime, that's the three prime. Okay. Where are you going to start? Where are you going to start making your daughter strand? Just give me the signal down here. So I'm <laughs> no, you can only add to the three prime, or maybe this rule. You can only move along the parental strand in a three to five direction. So where are you going to start? I have no idea. You can only move, no, don't tell him, don't tell him, don't tell him. Did you, you can. Hear the name of the guy that that one sequence? He was some no, look. <laughs> I don't know who that guy even is. But don't worry about him. Okay. <laughs> you are DNA polymerase. You can okay. only move along the parental <laughs> strand. Some protein. That's what you're talking you're about. You're an enzyme. I'm you're an enzyme, right? DNA polymerase. DNA and, okay. Ben, go sit down. No, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Stay here. I'm retarded when it comes. To no, you're not at all. I like that word. It's like riding a bike. 
DNA polymerase U can only move along the parental strand in a three to five direction. So, where are you going to start? Which direction are you going to move? Okay, so come here. Your DNA polymerase. I'm simply going to supply you with the nucleotides. But I have no idea what to give you. You've got to tell me what you want. What do you want? Uh, I want a... Uh, no, I want an A with that one. Okay, stand up. There you go. Uh, right. Now, I'm sorry to make you do this, but hold hands with Sarah. For those of you that are attached, don't worry about it. All right, good. You do, are doing this stitching. I think we should do more. What's next? <laughs> What's next? Let's see. I just barely looked in the book to see how this was kind of working out. So. What you bonds are being that, formed? You could have said that you know, this I happens know. during the S phase of interphase. Would have <laughs> What's next? Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. To what? Which end of the daughter strand is this? Five. Five. Yeah. Which end is this? Three, three. Uh, which, which can you add to? Only this one. Only this end. Okay. Okay. What do you want next? Uh, T. Come here. All right. Come on, Angelica. In fact, what I'm going to do. You guys got hold can I have an A, that? Angelica? There. The people I'm giving nucleotides to, I want you to float around. Just float around. Just no, you've been you've been attached. Float around. Float around. Ben, tell them what you want. What do you want next? So get a G. Where's a G? Where's a G? Come on, pull it in. This happens very quickly. Give her one. I'm sick, I can't hold she goes Hold hands. Don't be shy. Uh, we need a C going on with her. C. Do we have a C? Chantel has a C. There. She's sick. Are you really sick? C, C, C. Those of you that have nucleotides, let's hover around Ben. Because by diffusion, you would probably move there. Don't diffuse too close. Here, Marcia, have a tip. Stitch them. All right. So, which end are you? Which end are you? Which end are you? Which end are you? Which end? You said three? All right. So, she's a five, he's a three. So, then she... All right, so you can all stop holding hands now. What I want you to do is face each other, though. All right, good. So I said you were the five prime end, right? Your right hand is your five prime side, and your left hand is your three prime side. Okay? Your right hand is your five prime, your left hand is your three prime. Okay? Now, with the daughter strand that was just made, you go in the opposite direction. So which hand is this going to be? Which side? Five. Three. Five. It's going to be your this is my five. This is my three. So that has to be your five. Five. Your three. five and three. Which end is this? Three. Right. All you've got to do is just point. Five. What direction are you? Which side are you? Three. Which side are you? No, you're not. I'm yes, three. you are. Sorry. I'm three. You're five. You're the five prime end. Three prime end. If you point in that direction, that's your five prime side. This is your three prime side. This is my three and this is my five. Okay. <laughs> you run in the opposite direction to whoever you're facing. Okay. All right. Now stay where you are. Which side? Five. Which side? Three. Which side? Five. Good. Which side? Three. All right. I'm going to be helicase. This is what helicase does, Ben, you've got to go fast. Oh. I'm just watching. <laughs> pick, pick up that little stack of... Right, so, 
I'm going to fly in his helicase. All right, I'm flying in, breaking up the hydrogen bonds, okay? And we're going to have a daughter strand assembled on this parent strand, a daughter strand assembled on that parent strand, okay? I only add helicase, DNA polymerase, stand behind me. Only adds to the three prime end, right? So, I'm going to make a daughter strand on this parental strand. I can do it in that direction, right? Sure? No, 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 no. 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 Okay. So, hang on. So this one, I can copy in that direction? Yes. You sure? Yes. Which side are you? Three. You're the three prime end of... Shh. Angelica, get in position. But you have to start down there. This is the three prime end... Shh. Wait, 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 wait. Hush. Hush. Thank you. This is a parent strand, right? You're both now parent strands. All right, we're going to go through another round of replication. Three prime end, right? Five prime end. So if a daughter strand forms here, daughter strand forms here, that's the parent strand, which end of the daughter strand is this? Five. Five. So it will copy like this, because this is the three prime, it can only add to the three prime growing end, right? Right? Yes. So... We won't add more people into the mix, we don't have much space, but Ben, I want you to tell me what you're going to add to that T. I'm helicase. What are you going to add? Follow me. Follow me. So they're adding with a 5 end. You got a G. Or C. C. A. B. He's adding them in the wrong direction. Right. No. No. He's. Shh. We're the leading strand. He's followed. He's followed me. He walked along the parent strand in a what? Three to five direction. That's the leading strand. Now let's go do the lagging strand. Yeah. Uh -oh. This is going to be the same thing. Right, here's a parent strand. This is the second. What end are you? Five. You're the three. Ben, can you walk along the parent strand in this direction? No. No, you can't. You can only go in this direction. You can only go in this direction, okay? So, follow me. I'm breaking it apart. Why not just start there? Go backwards. Because you can only go in that direction. So start there and say what you're going to add as you walk that way. I'm going to carry on. Go on. G, uh, G, uh, C, and now come on, catch up with me. Now do this part. No, you can, but you have to start here and work that way. Okay, so this will be uh, uh, A, C, T, and then uh, G. You've already added Tim, haven't you? Well, I don't know. I mean. Yeah, you have. <laughs> all right, so what we'll do <clears throat> is you guys on this side, since we've got all the correct nucleotides, we're just going to simulate now this lagging strand. But I want you to follow Ben, all of you guys, like bees around honey. Just... Walk to the end of the bench, follow him. What? Go on, walk to the end of this side. Ben, come here. Stand here. There are. There are. All right. Jessica, pick up your base. Right. This is our lagging strand. I'm only going to show you the lagging strand right now. I'm helicase. Imagine there's another strand here and I'm breaking them apart. Ben, your rules are only add to the three prime, only go along the parental strand three to five direction. So I'm busting them apart. Bust, 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 bust. Start him. <laughs> 
Now where are you going to go? Come on, catch up with me. Yeah, you've got to start now, and I've already trucked down here. Sorry. Start Sarah and go backwards. Now you wouldn't come zooming along and break all those, but you were just like coming from the side or the top, whatever. Right, so did you see how that worked? This would be one Okasaki fragment. This would be another Okasaki fragment. What, ben, what do we call those fragments? What do we call these fragments? Okasaki Right. These Okasaki fragments need to be joined together, and another enzyme comes in and joins them together. So, can you now see that? Did that sort of help? I, I know it seemed like chaos, but did that help? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to keep on going. Keep on going. Come on, catch up with me, dude. And then Ben's going to have to jump all the way back to me and go backwards. Yes. <laughs> Go back to bio okay, I want the daughter strand, folks, we just assembled, to cluster down here again. You are going to be helicase, I'm going to be polymerase. Okay? I'm screwed, man. In fact, why don't all you nucleotides come here? Just so you're not following me. But cluster, cluster. Okay, stand up. Stand up straight. Ben. I don't like being a guinea on this one. <laughs> All you've got to do is walk slowly and break hydrogen bonds. Got it? Walk slowly, break hydrogen bonds. Go. Okay, quick. Give me a G. G. G, 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 G. G, G. 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 C. T. Follow. Now I have to go and catch him up, right? Because I can only go in that direction. Now give me an A. A, 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 quick. Give me a C. Give me a T. Go that side. Show me a Give me a C. Yeah, right. So Ben would have gone further along. Go further along. Go to the end. And I would have had to call him up, but gone this way. Okay? The leading strand is easy. I just follow him and assemble. Lagging strand, I've got to go backwards. Okay? Make these little fragments called Okasaki fragments, and there's another enzyme that stitches those together because you have to join a, make a covalent bond to stitch the Okasaki fragments together. And the enzyme that does it is called DNA ligase. All right, you good? Okay. Now we're going to add one more level of complexity. Oh. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Go sit down. Just put your nucleotides over there. So it only adds to the free prime end of the parental strand. No, of the forming daughter strand. There's nothing to add to the parental strand. Okay. Is there anything to add to the parental strand? No, because it's not changing. That acts as your template. The daughter strand is the one that's being built, so that gets added to on the three prime end. Okay? All right. So now, let's give some of these enzymes some names. Helicase is the name of the enzyme that unzips the DNA helix. It's got quite a job to do. Firstly, it breaks hydrogen bonds. Secondly, and it does it with the help of some other enzymes, it's got a heck of a job. The DNA is a helix, right? And it's got to untwist that helix. Well, that creates tension in the coil. And it's a hell of a procedure to make sure that tension... Have you ever tried to undo rope that's all twisted together? Doesn't it go crazy? So there are other enzymes that prevent that tension being generated. And then we've got DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase joins nucleotides together on the complementary strand. 
Complementary strand is just another term I'm using here to mean daughter strand. And we've got the enzyme DNA polymerase that does it. And there are different DNA polymerases, all right? So I guess we can add to this. I didn't put it on this slide. But the Okasaki fragments that form, they need to be joined together. And it's a covalent bond that needs to be formed between a sugar and a phosphate. And an enzyme called DNA ligase does that. DNA ligase, think of it as molecular paste or molecular glue. It just joins them together, glues the fragments together forms a covalent bond, correct. The bonds along the backbone are covalent bonds. Bonds between the strands are hydrogen bonds. You said it forms a covalent bond between the sugar and the phosphate. Correct. If you join the fragments together, remember, you're, you're making a bond along the backbone. How do you spell Okasaki. Oh, crikey, can I remember? Okay. It's like... It's Okazaki. Is that right? Yeah. 